The following presentation is made possible through the generosity of Lifehouse Fellowship partners and friends. Give me wine skins and I fill up a whole barn full of wine. And I have all these skins and I ha have all this wine. Where do I, what do I do with that wine? And I had the Lord specifically say to me, Jeremy, I'm not giving you more skins until you take care of the one you got. So what does that mean, Lord? I'm broken and spilled out? Yes, it means that you're going to, when I pour new wine into you, make sure you pour it out onto others, and I'll take what I'll do with you with that old wine skin. Is I'll, I'll, I'll dip you in the water of my word. I'll begin to soften you with the water of my word, and then I'll pull you out, and I'll put my anointing on that thing, and I'll begin to make you moldable and flexible again. I was like, Okay. So you won't give new wine until you're already pouring out the old one. Some of us were like, okay, in this place where we need God to move, we need miracle signs and wonders to take place. We're asking God for the supernatural, but we won't do what he tells us to do. So then we'll never see what he wants us to see. So I just, I'm, 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 I'm getting us there. Today, we're going to look at the picture of Peter. Can you pull up Peter, please? There's old Peter. I like that look right there. Old Peter, St. Peter. Matthew chapter 14, 28 to 33. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So P Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Would you show the other picture, please? I love this picture because I think it represents where a lot of people are at in life. In the boat. One disciple is reaching out his hand saying, I, I, I want to come, Jesus. But Peter jumped the border of the natural to the supernatural. Peter went from a place of reasoning to a place of faith. In order to do what Jesus asked him to do, because Jesus said, come, Peter. And Peter came. My thought is, why couldn't we all walk on water? Peter's a good guy. Peter's a saint. Peter was a disciple. But why can't we all walk on water? What was it? 
They kept the other 11 in the boat. But Peter taking the faith to step on out of the borders of the norms. If Jesus called Peter out, don't you think he, he, if any of the others in the boat would have asked, he would have called them out too? Because he's no respecter of persons. I believe Jesus, they could all but had a big old party out there in the middle <laughs> of the lake. Walking on water. Walking in the supernatural things of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I've never walked on water. And I'm just like you when I'm calling you to expect miracles that go beyond the sense realm. But what's it going to take? expectation anticipation I'm going to anticipate and I'm going to expect God to do something miraculous in my life I'm going to walk where nobody has ever walked I'm going to do the things that nobody's ever done because I choose to believe in the miraculous work of God. I love that Peter crossed over. I love that Peter stepped out of the boat. I love that Peter left his brothers and said, I'm going where there's only one man that could take me. The expectation, the anticipation of Peter getting out of that boat and him keeping his eyes on Jesus and walking on water. Then looking around, he sees the waves and the winds and he begins to sink. Some would say, well, Oh, Peter, he, had, he didn't have very little, you know, he had very little faith. When's the last time you walked on water? Oh, Peter, he got all wet. I would rather be a wet water walker than a dry boat sitter. The story of Jesus walking on water appears three times in the four Gospels. But only in Matthew do we learn that Peter also walked on water. How crazy must that have been to witness? Ever since Peter began to sink, some have criticized him. But I have yet to see any of his critics repeat the feat. Examining Peter walking on water in response to Jesus' walk on water, I believe we learn eight things. You ready? Number one, look for Jesus and keep looking to Jesus. Look for Jesus and keep looking to Jesus. Although there's a storm around, and there was a, uh, but, you know, and, and here Peter is, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's in the storm, he's in the boat, there's storm around, he is looking for Jesus. And when he sees Jesus, he said, bid me come, and Jesus says, come. The only problem was that he stopped looking at Jesus. The principle is clear here, ladies and gentlemen, especially when life is a tumultuous storm, especially in the days we live in. Look for Jesus and keep looking to Jesus. 
So I asked this question, what does looking to Jesus and looking for Jesus look like to you today? Number two, when Jesus commands you, obey him. You've heard me talk a lot around here about obedience. How obedience is, there's, there's no other way to obey but to obey. When Jesus says to do it, when the Holy Spirit is leading you to do it, you do it, bless God. Jesus told Peter Peter to come to him on the water, and even though it made no sense, Peter did what Jesus said. This is what obedience looks like, doing what Jesus says. And I ask you this question this morning. Is there any area in your life that you are not obeying Jesus? Make sure you examine that and begin to obey. Number three, many of you are take, wanting to take a leap in faith. God never asked you to take a leap of faith. He only simply asked you to take the next step. Peter took one step to get out of the boat and onto the water. Peter was doing just fine when he was focused on the next step. And he got into trouble when he lost sight of the next step. Some of you just need to go ask Jesus, did I miss my last step? I just want to take the next step. I close all my letters. If you ever get a letter from me, how do I close it? Taking the next step, Pastor Jeremy. Because I realize and recognize, I know God's given me vision. I know he's given me a plan. But I can only get there, not by a leap, but by taking one step at a time. I was talking to Tanya yesterday. We were in the backyard, and and I looked at her. I said, did you think this was... This would be our lives. You know, we're empty nesters. Man, we're loving it. I ain't going to lie to you. We got our grand boys out there in the pool. I said, honey, I tell you what. I never thought we'd be here because many times it seemed like the enemy tried to snuff us out, try to just wear us out. And I'm so thankful that we're here today. You see, I tell people all the time it's not about the sprint. It's the marathon. It's it's about how, it's not how you get out of the blocks in this race. It's do you have the strength to to endure? Do you have the strength to to finish the race? It's easy to start. It's easy to to turn the corner and hand the baton off. No, 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 no. I'm talking about a marathon. You see, because that's what Christianity is. And as we look back over our lives, and, and Tanya, we, we, yesterday we was just doing that. We just began to say, God, you're faithful. God, so thank you. Thank you so much for being so good to us. Even when we weren't good, we don't deserve any of this. But it led us to how faithful he's been. You see, you'll never get your destiny, though, if you're trying to move over here, over there. You're, you're just like... A bag of popcorn. You got to get you got to get singly focused and take the next step. Take the next step. What is the last thing Jesus told you to do? What's the last thing Jesus told you to do? What's the last step Jesus take asked you to take? Number four. Faith unleashes. The supernatural. 
Peter did not experience the supernatural power of God that allowed him to walk on water until he trusted as evidenced by his actions. Let me tell you, there's a lot of talk, but no walk. A lot of talk, but no walk. Where are you at in your walk with the Lord? Is there anything you need to be doing differently in faith? Is there anything you need to be doing differently in faith? Number five. We're talking about eight lessons of Peter. Fear will sink you. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a day and age, in an hour, where propaganda and fear is running rampant. Sometimes we don't know who's telling the truth. So you have to really rely on the Holy Ghost. And let me just say this, you can't be in fear in this season. Refuse fear. How many of y'all listened to Wednesday night's, this last Wednesday night's message? I want to encourage you. Okay, that, that told a lot on you right there. I need you to go back and listen to that message. Because the spirit of fear would love to grip us in this season. The spirit of fear would love to stop you in your tracks. Go back and listen to Wednesday night's message. It'll help you, I promise you. Fear will sink you. Peter had faith. He walked on water. And when he had fear, he sank in the water. The same is true for you. Fear will sink you. And I ask this question. Is there any fear that is gripping and controlling your decision making? Number six. Jesus saves you from many things. <laughs> Period. Thank God that Jesus saves me from many things. I was driving to church this morning, and I got behind two people that were driving Miss Daisy. And I was like, I got to get to church. Let's go. Move it. Noticed that there was a police officer waiting for me. And I was going slow. Had I not been going slow, <laughs> it'd been a different story. Pastor Matt would be preaching. <laughs> Jesus saves you from many things. Jesus not only saved Peter from hell, but on this occasion, Jesus saved Peter from drowning. And I think this is a good, a good exercise. What things has Jesus saved you from? <laughs> what things has Jesus saved you from? Now, seven, a, a little faith is better than no faith. Right? Thank God for Peter's faith to step out of the boat. A little faith is better than no faith. Lord Jesus spoke of Peter's little faith. And this means that he was capable of even greater sustained faith. But the guys in the boat apparently had no faith. Let's, let's make this our prayer. Lord, increase our faith. Amen? Amen. Number eight, and I close right here. You can choose to worry or worship. In an instant, the men went from worrying about the circumstances in the boat to worshiping Jesus. What happened when they began to worship? 
the storm ceased. Did you ever notice that in that scripture? Immediately when they begin to worship, the storm ceased. And I finished this, finished this message with this question. How's your worship going? How's your worship going? How's your personal relationship with Jesus going? The, border for, the borders of our boat keep us from the supernatural miracles. Maybe the miraculous is supposed to be the norm. Maybe what God is calling us to live, maybe what God is calling us to live up to is living a life of supernatural. Church, I want to I want to encourage you to expect the supernatural, the miraculous. Let's all stand our feet. I gave you a lot of information today. I know y'all are on a pursuit of God. I pastor one of the best churches. I want you to know that. Because I, I, I know I'm in a house of people that are in a pursuit of the supernatural. But can I, can I increase you a little bit today? Let's expect God to do more. Let's take the limits off. Whatever limits we've placed on him as a church, let's take those limits off. And that includes me. Church, I love you. Let's cross over. You know, this week, <sighs> I'm debating. I had to have a heart to heart. with my God and with my daughter because I can't have hate in my heart I ask the Lord to expose any area of hate toward a particular community I have. It was affected me. It was affecting mine. My walk. And I'm asking God to heal some things between me and my daughter. But I can't carry things in my heart and expect a miracle. Whatever it is, it's in your heart. Let's get it clean. And 
let's watch God do a miracle. Lord, I bless the people. clean us we step out in faith and Lord we just put our trust in you I bless my friends our partners our online audience and I ask you right now Lord to heal us And put within us a burning desire to see the miraculous. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love you. Hey guys, this is Pastor Jeremy Sutton here at Lifehouse Fellowship Church. Thank you for tuning into our broadcast today. What a privilege it is to come into your home to minister the uncompromising Word of God. I believe as the Word went forth, it challenged you. Also in the challenge, it also may have confirmed some things in your life. And and it's in our honor and our privilege to, to just bring the Word for such a time as this. We know that the Word is what's gonna help us in these season, in these times. And so you may have been listening to me today and saying, I need to get back into the game. I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. And I want to just pray a simple prayer. Would you pray with me to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Would you say it with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Fill me. I repent of my sins. Be the Lord of my life from this day forward. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, would you do a couple of things for me? I would certainly appreciate it. Number one, would you go to our website at lifehousefellowship.net and hit the connect link and fill out that digital connect card? We would appreciate it. Number two, you can give us a call at 432-262-LIFE. We want to get a staff member talking to you to help you on your next steps with Jesus. Our broadcasts are made possible by the love gifts of our friends and partners. And we're asking you, would you come and be a partner with us? Down below are the options for you to sow into this ministry. Your gift gives us the ability to go into homes just like yours and minister love, hope, and healing to bring life and life everlasting to those that are needing a touch from the Father. Thank you so much for your gift today. We certainly do appreciate it. Until we connect again, remember, great days are here and greater days are ahead.